Game seven is out and out combat. When the smoke clears, Canada holds the field, and the series is tied. Now it all comes down to one final game. We've been told by everybody we're supposed to be the best hockey nation, and here it is, game eight of this series, and it's still in doubt. And we're going to sit there for whatever it is, two hours from the Luzhniki Arena and have this all determined. The sense of tension in the country was enormous. Televisions are wheeled into classrooms. Businesses shut for the day. Virtually all of Canada comes to a standstill, united by a mixture of hope and dread. In Moscow, even Pierre Plouffe won't miss the game, escorted to the Luzhniki Ice Palace by armed guards. I'm not allowed to sit with any Canadian fans. I'm not allowed to applaud or cheer. I'm behind a Soviet bench in a sea of militia. The air in the Moscow arena here is tense. In a last-minute switch, the Soviets drop one of the referees and bring in a hand-picked replacement. They nearly uh, caused a riot in the discussions prior to the game. The uh, start of the game was very much in doubt there up until noon today. When the game starts, the new referee goes to work fast. And the Soviet fans, there's a dive. There was a real dive there. There'll be a penalty, and Peter Mahoney breaks himself on him. Canada is called for two penalties and plays the first four minutes of the game shorthanded. Then, a third penalty Malka call. Takes his pass. He's knocked over by, and there'll be a penalty there. And just one penalty after another in this game. Arise is totally intent at this call. Team Canada explodes in a rage. I'm afraid this kind of officiating is going to cause more than one instance before this game is over. By the time they start the third period, the Soviets hold a two-goal lead. But Phil Esposito scores a quick one. And then, with seven minutes left in the game, Team Canada scores again to tie it up. Or so it appears. The Soviet goal judge does not hit the red goal light. Alan Eagleson, the man who'd helped put Team Canada together, leaps from his seat, furious. When the Soviet police try to arrest him, the Canadian players go after him. And I believe Alan Eagleson is in on it over there as far as we can tell. Eagleson is escorted to the Canadian bench. The police were trying to throw Eagleson out. The goal is allowed. Now, the series and the game are tied with less than a minute to play. Given everything, and it's been one of the best games I think I've ever seen. Bernoyer has it on that wing. Here's a shot. Henderson made a wild stab for Spell. Here's another shot. Fight by the floor. Henderson has scored for Canada. Henderson right in front of the net. Every part of you just sort of spills out onto the floor in a puddle of mellow. And, and of like, oh, it's over, it is over, it is over. And they fought like tigers tonight to come right through. That sense of catharsis that we nearly lost it all is now released with victory. And it's one of those moments that if you were alive and sentient and over the age of five, you know where you were when it happened. I felt I wasn't Canadian. It's the same thing when the war was over, right? Eh? God is Canadian! I think the 72 series defines hockey ultimately as Canada's sport. It's the one that defines us internationally. And we saw what happened in 72 when our national pride was on the line, when it looked like we were going to lose, and we understood what it meant to us. And I think that was really an important thing politically, and I think it was an important thing nationally. And it was an important thing for hockey because it changed the way hockey was played on the ice as well.
I mean, more people talk about it today than even probably back then. Uh, had they won back, if it had been today, they probably would have had a parade for them. They probably would have shut down the country for them. Uh, and we didn't know how to do all those things. We didn't even know how to celebrate because, you know, it was the first time we had gone through something like this. We just knew we were proud. As for prisoner Pierre Plouffe, he's released with a warning and a story he'll remember for years. I am so proud to be a Canadian. Our character, our will, and our refusal to surrender is something I will remember for the rest of my life. This is our legacy.